Alright guys, this is a new kind of video that I'm doing. This isn't really a review, it's more of a helpful hit, hints and tips for the Traditions Kentucky Rifle and 50 Cal. This will be several parts. The first part is going to deal with basically the wood and getting it finished off to where it's ready to be put together. And the second part will be about the, about the barrel and having that thing browned in my case. Overall, I think it's a great product and um, the cool thing, but you should go into this with the understanding that unless you are a craftsman or someone very experienced as a hobbyist, you're not going to make a wall hanger, museum quality, show quality rifle out of this kit. They're not designed to do that. The wood isn't top grade wood. It's good maple, but it's not great maple. The striping isn't amazing. It's not really meant to be a wall hanger, it's meant to be a shooter. You're meant to shoot these things. The idea is you get together with your kid and you make one, and that's why they have the Traditions brand name to it. It really is meant to kind of foster this love of craftsmanship and firearms and that kind of stuff. So going into this, if you're a good craftsman or a very advanced hobbyist, you probably don't need this video, but this is more for someone in my position who wanted to try this out to see if they could enjoy it. And I so far have, but you got to kind of go in with the expectation that you're not going to do it perfect, and that's okay. I mean, it's if you want to make another one later, yeah, go for it and do better. But I mean, you're not going to make this thing perfect. All right, so the first part of this video is going to relate to the wood and finishing it. And little issues I ran into, things that were inconsistent about the, about the stock from from the store that I had to handle and kind of accept that it was going to be flawed or that I didn't have the ability to do it to where I felt comfortable and that kind of stuff. So let's get started with that real fast. The first thing you're going to see is the actual uh, ramrod that's provided, and you're going to see some flaws with that. All right. The biggest issue I had with the ramrod is that it was not straight. Now, apparently, this is a common problem. They don't—they're not arrow straight. It really looks like they just took a maple dowel and kind of turned it into a into a ramrod for the sake of the rifle. Uh, doesn't make or break the rifle because it has guides once it's all all said and done. But just as far as the quality, that might bother you. So if you really want to get this done right, you can pop the brass end caps on that and get you a really straight piece. I didn't worry about it, and I wouldn't tell you to worry about it. But that is one thing. Don't think you have a messed up product just because that thing's not perfectly straight. All right, so now that's over, we're going to look at the four stock next. Overall, it's a pretty easy section to build. There are some things that require a little bit of extra woodwork. The front thing, the front part where the end cap goes on, where the little brass fitting goes on the front, there is a, there can be a lot of excess wood, and that wouldn't be a problem. But the end cap is supposed to line in flush with that octagonal barrel, and because of that, it, if it doesn't line up that wood perfectly, I'll show you in just a second. It'll come, even when it's tightened down to its fullest, it'll come off lopsided because there's a bunch of extra wood on it. So you got to file that wood down or sand it down, however you need to get it down there to where it's where it'll allow that barrel to lay flush. All right. The next part is where the joint plate goes. We're, basically, we're talking about where we join with pins, the butt stock, and the fore stock. So essentially, the rifle comes with the uh, basically where the, the inletting for the barrel it comes straight and level. So it's actually a sharp corner that can snag on clothing really easy. And the and the joint plate. So if you want to get the inletting for the barrel where it meets up and the joint plate flush together, it might require a little bit of extra sanding and also possibly a little bit of, of metal work with filing and, and basic, just wearing down the metal till it's either curved or slanted flush to the barrel, however you want it. Mine I chose to curve off because it was a little easier. But overall, that it wasn't that big of a deal, but it is something you need to make sure you're aware of as you need to make sure you have all the material to make that nice and shiny so it doesn't look like it's been cut or sanded and all nasty looking. So that's one thing to take note of as you're working on the project. And the last portion as it relates to the brass and the wood is the actual butt stock and the end stock. So first thing, where the inlet is for the trigger guard. If you, Usually when you get it, it won't fit. You're going to have to do a little bit of Dremel work. I did not have a Dremel, so I was sanding feverishly and using a very sharp razor blade. But to get that flush in there, one side will poke out or the other side will. It's meant to be very snug, so the idea is that they didn't want to over machine the wood and then you have a big gap between that you have to fill with either epoxy or you're going to be filling it with sawdust or or god forbid using some wood putty but essentially you're going to do a little bit of sanding work either on the fat end which you'll know i'm talking about if you have one of these or the skinny end all right so the next major issue with the butt stock is the actual butt of the stock itself so where the brass butt stock plate meets the end of the stock in the shoulder rest here it's pretty well flush. I have it curved off. I didn't make it sunk down perfectly. I didn't think I'd be able to. But there it looks pretty good and it kind of rounds off into the brass, which is, which is basically what I wanted. Now right there it's pretty much flush. But that being said, before that there was a good quarter inch. Now that being 
even more so than that, if you were to buy a new one, this is you might see ones with even more. The first one of these I bought, which I then returned because I wanted a little easier job, was actually a good bit above that. It was almost a half inch over where that brass plate rested. So there was a lot of extra woodwork I would have had to do if I had chosen to keep that particular one. So you can just go through and you're in like a Cabela's or a store that sells these and flip through and make sure you get one that's going to be lower on how intensive the woodwork will be. Because if you buy this online and you want to return it, well, because it's going to be too hard, they're going to say too bad and you're going to be stuck with it. So make sure when you're purchasing this that you're getting one that you know you are going to be able to do relatively easily. The biggest problem with the butt stock issue, which to me was the biggest issue for me in doing this, was that if you don't do it just right, either you're going to have a dip in your butt stock, like where the, your cheek rest should be resting, or you're going to have a big hump, which will also look equally stupid. So that's probably the biggest area where I was lo looking really hard to make sure things were as close to flush as they could be, so the work I would be doing wouldn't be that intensive. All right, here's the last, well, second to last thing, really. Where the action goes, in this case, mine is a um, percussion cap model rifle. You're going to have to dremel out this little area. It's going to fit snug, but you don't want it to force it in. So that's how you want it to be. You want it to get it in there, but not have to sit there and force it in and feel like you're digging against the wood. So you get a dremel just or file or sandpaper and just sand that out and make it feel a little more flush and not quite so tight. And the very last thing, if you're curious, I use the Traditions uh, stock finishing kit that kind of comes, doesn't come with, it's actually like 12 bucks. It comes with the um, the stain, which is dark walnut, which is what you see here. It also comes with a finish on, finishing lacquer that supposedly is a complete finish. I found that it left it way too tacky, and even after sanding, it didn't look very shiny the way I wanted it to. So what I did was I basically followed the instructions for the um, the finishing lacquer, and then the last thing I did was put start put sanded it down with a little bit of very very high grit sandpaper that comes with the kit and steel wool. After that, I started using linseed oil, and that kind of gives you the shine and it really brings out the grain of the grain of the wood. So I definitely recommend using the Traditions kit, but also making sure that you're all that you use linseed oil or a true oil kit, whatever you want to use. But boiled linseed oil is cheap, and that's what I use for mine. Uh, uh, as always, thank you all so much for watching. Please like my videos if you like them, or subscribe to my channel. Everything else is awesome, in my opinion, but I'm the one making it. Uh, remember, support the NRA, support the Second Amendment. Thank you guys so much for watching.